Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us as we look at opening doors for our students at Nashville State Community College. I'm Amy Bryant. I'm going to be helping lead this session with the amazing Courtney Woodard, who has joined Nashville State and is located at our Southeast campus and is an amazing resource for our students. We are so grateful that you're here today as we talk about opening doors and how we can hopefully open doors for our students to help them succeed and help them overcome any barriers that may be in their way. And so as we begin, since we're talking about opening doors, we wanted to start with truly an open door for us. When there's a door that's open, it seems a little bit more welcoming where we can go in and enjoy and see what's going on around us. And so what we want to do today is to really think about those opening doors and to ask ourselves the question, are we opening doors for students? Now, if we're faced with a hallway of doors like this, the one that we're probably going to be drawn to is the one that has that crack open with the light shining through. Now, we know that we may not be talking about physical doors. We're not talking about is your door open in the hallway or not. Instead, what we're talking about is how can we help provide resources to our students to help them be successful as we move through. And so we want to start with a little bit of engagement for us. And so what I want us to think about is a reflection. This week has been a lot about preparing for the first day. And I laugh when we say first day because first day might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, or all online where our students haven't even logged in yet. So as we think about first days, if you will, scan this QR code that's on the screen. I can also drop into chat a link to it that would be helpful. So if you don't mind a messy screen for just a minute, we will get this link for you to the chat so that you can see it. You should be able to see the code in chat right now. And what we want you to think, ask yourself about, it's anonymous. Your name is not attached to it. Think back to your first day. It could be first day at a new job, first day at school, first day in college or graduate school as you went through. What are some of the concerns and worries that you had? When you think back to that first day, what are some of the concerns and worries that you had? Oh, I love the answer that's already there, not knowing someone being alone. Thank you for those of you who are typing in. They'll pop up as we go. Oh, will I be on time? Am I ready? I was worried about traffic. How long is it going to take me to get there? Where do I park? Which direction do I park? Where am I allowed to park? Where should I go? What do I need to have with me? Is the teacher going to be nice? We're not knowing anyone. And so already when we're thinking about our first days, there's some worries and concerns that are popping up for us. What are we gonna do? Am I ready? Do I fit? Where do I belong? Can I do all this work? Man, it's amazing when you walk into that first day and they give you 15 weeks worth of work, right? Right off the bat and you're like, oh, I just wanna do day one. Can we just do day one, not 15 weeks or seven weeks? And so when we look at that big syllabus and those huge weekly schedules, sometimes we're thinking, can I do this? Oh, can I do this online? Can I do this hybrid? How are we meeting? How often are we meeting? Where is SEC, WBR, and all these other random things that we don't know? So as we think about these first days, I want us to look at a second question in the same poll. What do we think as we are going through of these concerns that we've already shared? Thinking about our reflection that we just did. Do you think your students may have had these same concerns or worries? We can nod, you can unmute and talk to us. Do we think they have these same concerns?
I'm going to say probably yes. It's amazing to me when we have prior weeks where students are walking around campus, finding their rooms, finding the classrooms, and I'm having to tell them, you know what, the classrooms might change. So look around a little bit more because sometimes our classrooms do. But to go even deeper, what additional concerns and worries do you think your students have that we didn't mention for putting ourselves in those student shoes and that student viewpoint? What are some additional concerns, worries that our students have that we may not have mentioned? I'm gonna stop screen sharing so that we can talk to each other. What are some of the concerns that we see? Well, for one thing, this is like walking into a foreign land where the language is different. The words, you don't know what the words mean, like prerequisite and cohort and blah, 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 blah. And everybody else seems to assume that you already know all that. You don't understand the social norms like in the classroom. So you have to behave really differently than you do with your own family and friends. Nobody's really taught you that. You've never been in this formal environment before, but it seems like when you just act the way that is normal in the rest of your life, you get in trouble. You constantly get criticized or told to not do that. And it can be really intimidating. Nelian and then Maria. I think daily life worries, right? You're doing dealing with all the things that we've already mentioned about new environments and what can I do and all of that. And then just did I get my kids there in time? My car's broken down. I mean, there's just so many daily life things uh, that go along with everything else that we're talking about. Um, this week in Dixon, I noticed um, our rooms were labeled incorrectly, uh, which throws a curve. Uh, and I'm like, no, no, no. Stats in here aren't over there, but they had them switched. And I'm like, no, so we're directing traffic. But the other interesting thing about this young group of students is they want to raise their hand and ask for everything. Uh, can I go to a restroom? Um, I need to step. I'm like, you're an adult. Please just do what you need to take there. And that's a new concept for them, being able to just had that freedom of making that decision and doing something. They even asked me, can I go outside to my car and pick something up? Oh yeah, and you'll be allowed back in. No problems, you could come in and go as you need to go. You know, but those are things um, that they're adjusting to. Uh, as some, a little bit of freedom to do, make decisions. And what's, again, is what's acceptable in a college classroom as opposed to what, what they're used to in high school. Um, which apparently is very restricted. Gracie, go ahead. Uh, Maria, yeah, I've encountered the same thing, uh, the freedom to think for themselves and without being told the answers in addition to that. But in all fairness, though, my students, when I've asked, like, you know, why are you uncomfortable? Because I tell mine, it's the same thing, Maria, you're adults. You have to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. If you have to go to your car, go to your car. Like just, you know, I'm not gonna end, but they also, there is a mixed, uh, there are other instructors who are much more strict. So I, I try to understand that, okay. Cause so they've told me, they're like, well, in this class, um, we are actually not allowed to leave the classroom until the instructor says it's officially a break time. And if we leave, the instructor gets really upset. And so I was like, okay, so this is a good learning about life, right? that people are different, you're going to encounter different situations where, you know, but that that does cause them, uh, you know, anxiety because they're like, well, I'm trying to be good in this class and she's telling me to do this. And then I go to the other class and she or he is trying, you know, telling me this. So. Gracie, I love that. And then going back to the class a day later or two days later and trying to remember which teacher allows which and not to get in trouble. Maria, your hands up. Talk to us. Um, one thing that they're realizing is, and this is what I suspected, that students have both seven week and 15 week classes and the expectations and how to deal with that. And I was, um, I discovered that I have a couple of students that have like two seven week classes on ground and like, well, one of them had two seven week classes on ground and four online classes that are 15 weeks. And I'm like, how did that even happen? Why were you allowed to register for that? But she's got them. 
And I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought we were not going to do that to these students, overbook them that way or let them overbook themselves. And, um, but another one has about 22 course credits this semester alone and two of them are seven weeks. And I'm just like, okay. And so that's a big thing. And of course they're going to do it, but I'm like, you guys need to be really sure about time management here and how to get this done because it's going to be intense. Um, yeah, Maria, the uh, I, I would I would bet money they did not have an advisor. They registered themselves. And I noticed that the <laughs> that something major happened and everyone seemed to forget that we were going to institute some kind of computer trip switch or warning signal that they mm -hmm. were doing that because I'm seeing a lot of that, too. And I was like, wait, I thought I thought they said we were, you know, they would not the computer would not allow the students. But apparently the computer is allowing the students to do whatever the heck they want. Yeah, so, because, yeah, I agree with you, Grace, because I remember having that conversation when I think Silverman came and spoke to us at Dixon yes, that yeah. that was not going to happen. And I'm no. like, whoa, no, 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 you can't do that. You know, that's a lot of stuff. I mean, that's a big yeah. load. And then, like, oh, okay, be okay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And so we're looking at the load and they're optimistic and we're trying to be optimistic with them, but we're also imagining the life challenges that Neely Ann has mentioned and the issues that are there and thinking, whoo, that looks heavy. We're going to be positive with you, but also realistic. And how can we help? And when I say we in this instant, I'm not just meaning those of us currently watching this or you sitting by yourself, possibly watching a recording in the future. When I say we, I really want us to think we as Nashville State as a whole and we as a community. And so as we dive in and look, the next question that's in our. Amy, you're accidentally uh, muted. I tried to hit enter and it muted me, which was very rude of Zoom. I apologize and appreciate the update, Gracie. What is available as resources right now at your school, at your community that's helpful for your students? So if you will share in that slide, oh, what are the resources that we have in our community right now already that we know about? What are the resources that are available to help alleviate some of their concerns, some of their worries? Already we have in there our campus maps bus passes that are available. What resources do we know about? As others type a resource that I carried to my class this week was the student life resource. They had a calendar of all of the things that are happening this fall. And I was like, well, look, they have cookies today. So I just took some of the calendars and handed out during class when I handed out my syllabus to show here's some events that you can go to, to meet others, to belong, to be a part of our community. What other resources do we know of that are available? Our learning center, the learning resource center, the faculty that are available, employees that are there to help sitting at the tables to guide people to class. What resources do we have? I'm going to give some time for you to type in. We have the Oasis Center, Tennessee Reconnect Advisors, amazing staff members, friendly faces, I think are a great resource where people walk into campus. They know they have people that they can ask for help as they're going through. So as we look at these resources, and I'm gonna leave the poll open for a few minutes. So if you're typing, you still can. I also want us to pause for a minute and think about how can we better help our students? Now we're pouring out a lot. People are showing up and asking for things and we're giving and we're showing. This is not a, I need to be available to them 24 hours. That is not how we can better help our students because we have to be able to fill our cup to also help others. But I want us to think about how we can better help our students. And sometimes that means we're just a bridge. 
where we know of resources like the Learning Center and the Learning Resource Center, and we provide that to our students multiple times throughout the semester so that they know that it's a great resource for them. And so as we think about how to help our students, I think one of the ways that we may overlook, and I say we as a whole community, is that we sometimes don't ask our students, what do you need? What's standing in the way? What do you see as your challenges? On my welcome survey that I give to students every class, whether it's online, hybrid, face-to-face, -face, independent study, what's one important thing about you I need to know? What are you concerned about this semester? What are you looking forward to this semester? What's your course load? Oh, Gracie, I love that. They have stick on badges that say, have a question, ask me, so that people know they have somebody that they can reach out to. I think doing surveys at the beginning of the semester is important, but also maybe the end of week two, seven week course, middle of week two, because that's the middle of the fourth week. If you look at it that way, how are we doing? I'll tell you, as teaching a seven week this semester, it made me giggle when I was like, oh, I'm giving my mid semester survey in week three. Yeah, I am. Why? Because that's the middle. But I also know that if I can't capture them at the start of week three, it's going to be really hard to ensure they're successful. So if I can get those concerns, then we might be able to turn some things around. Once we get these survey results, analyze those. Share them with your students. I think that's something we sometimes forget. We analyze, we come up with a plan and we're like, OK, implement the plan. But we don't actually reflect back with our students. Hey, here's what people said. It doesn't take long. We did it with our Slido just a second ago, and it took less than a minute each time. Here are the things that are popping up. How does that help? Well, you know, in our first question, there were a lot of things about belonging. And if we share that with our students, they immediately are like, oh, I'm not the only one worried about not belonging. So now they belong in the area of worried about not belonging. Isn't that fun how that works? You build belonging because you're worried about not being able to belong. And so we can show these commonalities that are there among our students. It may be finding out, wow, we got a lot of 15-week courses and seven-week courses. How are we going to balance that load? It could be discovering that a student may not have remembered time for lunch. So let's talk about eating snacks in between classes and during breaks. And then what we really want to focus on today Let's share the resources that are available. And when we share these resources, let's build bridges for our students to help them know what is available to help them be successful. Because just like they don't know where to park on campus or possibly where to log in to access the course, it may mean they also don't know the resources that are widely available for them. So what we want to do now is to go through a lot of the resources that are currently available. In this room, we have a lot of experience. We also have some people who are newer to Nashville State. And so some of these resources, you're going to be like, yeah, I know. I got that. I know that one. And that's okay. But our hope is that we can build resource lists and links to be able to share them with other colleagues, share them with other students to have them available so that when a student mentions, man, my car broke down. Ah, let's talk about transportation assistance. Hey, Courtney, who do we go to for transportation assistance at Southeast? You actually come to me now. So <laughs> um, I just got the bus pass, I guess, authentication last week. But yes, um, the resources are there. A lot of students don't know about them. So I'd really love your help in sending those out to everyone and sending students our way um, because a lot of times they're just there and they don't get used. And so when we think about these, Gracie, talk to us. I'm so sorry. No, don't apologize. No, I, I feel like I'm interrupting. Um, no, I was just going to say... Um, that it would be nice if someone who knows more about this, so other than faculty, could, I really don't understand why we don't have a list. 
I don't understand why we don't have something in one place that you could give to faculty to send out because I'll, I'll tell you that every semester at Southeast, there's a bunch of faculty who are spending a lot of time trying to track down on websites, trying to find the proper people. And we hand make these lists and we've all talked and we're like, you know, it's really sad that we have to put this, like we already don't have any time, but we're putting in that effort for the students, but shouldn't that be something that should be more codified and organized by the college? So that students don't know about it because I've gone on, if you, have you ever pretended to be a student or just grabbed a random student, sat them down in front of a computer, because I've done this at Southeast, and asked them to find something and then watched how they do it? They don't navigate our website the same way we do. We live it. We work it hours a week. They don't. And the, the website we have is worlds, worlds better than the one we did. But something like the resources, I think, should be more upfront and 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 it's better. But like you were saying, make a list. Well, adjuncts aren't going to have time for that. A lot of faculty aren't either going to be aware of the need to make a list. Like, in other words, there should be a list that is given to us during convocation or the first week or whatever and emailed to faculty that they can place in their course shells where all the students, it doesn't like, okay, fine. If you're my student, Elizabeth Stein, any of the ESOL faculty, Catherine Sorensen, you're going to get the list because we make the effort. But what about the ones who, who are less in touch with things? And that doesn't mean they're bad faculty. It just means, so I guess I just don't understand this whole, well, faculty, you need to go make a list. No. This well, should I will tell you, Gracie, right on that, you're making me and Courtney smile because this summer we were in a training together and we said, you know, there's so many resources, but there's a new website and it's messy and we don't know where to find anything. And so the reason that we did this workshop really was not to say, hey, everybody go make your own, but to be able to say, we've gathered what we know of, which is limited. But we want to provide all of these links that we know of currently and have them to you in one PowerPoint and one presentation. And I dropped in chat and I hope it uploaded one Word document that has all of these links in one thing. And then our goal is getting feedback because I know Maria knows things that I don't know of. Gracie, you're going to know resources that we don't know of. And then hopefully this can become a living document that gets shared out and people can have. And when you're a new hire, here's the resources that are there. Like many things, being very bluntly honest at Nashville State. Should it be done? Yes. But when you say who's going to do it, people look around and point fingers. And I'm so grateful for Courtney's willingness to say, let's do this, knowing that our list isn't going to be complete, but anything is better than nothing. Right? And so when you see that word list, you're going to say, Amy, that's not all the resources. You are right. Please add in the resources you know of, send them back to us. But we wanted to try to start the conversation of how can we make these resources more readily available? Because if we don't know the resources are there, we can't share them. And if our students don't know the resources are there, really bluntly honest, and they don't feel like they belong, they're not going to ask us for the resources either. And I'm so grateful for the conversation that's happening in this room. We're already after four days of classes, which is not much. Well, you're talking about your students' even, needs and their schedules, which means you're building that culture of belonging and providing these resources already. But we also have to recognize that we aren't going to know their needs, but we can surely keep sending resources out to all so that they can then share with others. Gracie, talk to us. So this was definitely not against you or Courtney or anything. It, it's It's a just frustration um, because of what you just said, that the students don't know. They don't know about food pantries. They don't even know how to 
get to it, um, get, you know, because everything has to be on, done online. And, and anyway, so thank you and Courtney for partially addressing this, but I still say like, I, that's great that you and Courtney did this, but it should not have been your responsibility. And I know when some of us have maybe mentioned the need for a centralized list to give our students, I've gotten the same thing you just said. People point fingers, people say, well, it's this department or it's this division or it's this person or that. And that needs to stop. People need to start taking responsibility and stepping up. And I'm not talking about faculty. So that's that's just what I wanna share because the number of people, the students that we lose because of lack of knowledge of this is ridiculous and it would really help our retention numbers. So it should be a priority and thank you to you two for doing this. This is really great. Well, and again, this is not an end all be all because Courtney knows with the work that she does every single day, new resources become available and sadly, some resources go away. We know textbook assistance every semester runs out. And so it gives us an ability to one, think about how can we support the foundation? How can we share about the foundation to get more support from the community? But also reminding students, hey, this may have been a no right now. So after we make our schedules, let's figure out how to go ahead and make those requests now and earlier. So maybe it'll be a yes in the future. Maria, your hands raised, talk to us. Um, let's, talking about the laptops, computers, and especially the calculators, um, that's a big issue because, you know, we're talking a, over $100 a calculator for a calculator that they need in math classes. But here's the problem. Um, they're all housed in Nashville. By the time our Humphreys County students try to get in there to log in to do that form, they're already out. I mean, they already were already out when, what was it, Wednesday when we got that email? And I had students yesterday in my, because um, we only meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Humphreys County now, and that's when the only time is open. She's like, I tried to get in there and it told me there was an error. I go, well, they're already gone. So they're not accepting any more applications because they're already loaned out. So then I had to find another resource for the student, which I did because I'm so grateful that Dixon had a few calculators left over, but I don't understand why Dixon has calculators left over to loan to students and we don't in Humphreys County. I don't understand where things are just in one campus and not in all campuses. My other problem is, um, and I, I don't know if this is here or not, but um, resources like, for example, having the right personnel at a campus. Yesterday morning, actually happened both days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, on Tuesday and Thursday, there were students out in the parking lot waiting for the campus to be open. There was not an officer to open our campus. Now, and so we had to wait on staff that is not there to report till eight. I teach class an eight o'clock class. I had a set of keys, but yesterday on my, you know how we do, we switch bags or whatever. I didn't have my keys. So I couldn't let them in even though I was there at 730. So I had to wait for somebody too. But the thing is that adds anxiety when they can't even get in their campus. They can't get their stuff together to get ready for their eight o'clock class. So that's not helping them. So part of that is eliminating anxiety and, and how they get their you know, opening doors for them. It's as simple as letting them in on campus, but if they don't get that time to get ready for the class, which is an eight o'clock class, you defeat the purpose. They're already anxious. They're already stressed. I mean, you know, you build all that in already. And then they have A and P. <laughs> you know, let's be real. <laughs> That's another stressor. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I want this to be, you know, we're talking about equity, equity for our students. We need equity for our campuses to make sure they function on the first day of school. Of school, The first week is so vital. And we need, like I said, we need to let them know where they could get all this assistance. Then let's have it available for them and let them know about it and provide it and not shortchange some of them. Maria, I'm grateful beyond words for you sharing that. Because your example, 
as we talk about opening doors is literally if the doors of our campus aren't open, we're not welcoming. Now, can we go back and change Tuesday and Thursday? No. But can we send emails to some people, levels above us, administrators, to say, hi, this is the experience that occurred on Tuesday and Thursday. We're not setting our students up for success. How can we help improve this? Please hear me, the wonderful we is in there. Because sometimes we have to help improve, even if it's not our responsibility. Now, is it safe for Maria to go open the door? No, absolutely not. But it may be that we need to look at shifting somebody's hours, where instead of their hours starting at 745, it starts at 715 or 7 to get the doors open in time for classes. And if we don't have open doors, we are setting our students up for failure prior to everything that is there. And as we look at our assistance, how quickly can we get it to people? And so with a technology assistance form, it may be how can we hear the lovely we, and I'm not pointing fingers at us, but is there a way when students register for stats to send them an automatic email that says, hey, you're gonna need this type of calculator. We have a technology assistance program. Would you be interested? You can't pick it up yet, but you can go ahead and submit it. Or, hey, you're going to be taking this class and you have to have these certain clothes. Here are some links for those types. And I know that sounds silly. You're taking a lab this semester. You need closed-toed shoes in lab. So think about as you're preparing for the school year, not just what textbooks do I need, but do I have tennis shoes or closed-toed shoes? that I can wear. If not, here's our career closet link that has shoes available. And we can start providing those resources early on and be able to normalize the resources. And I hate to put it this way, but I want people to see these resources like a water fountain. They're there for you. Refill your water bottle between classes. Go to the campus cupboard, ask for technology assistance. It's a resource that's available that we need to be able to use. And something's popping up in chat. And it also allows us to say, do we need more of early on to be able to go out? Courtney is amazing. And she and April Robinson are our two student resource managers. And I'm going to repeat that so you hear the number. They are our two student resource managers. All of us in this room want that number to multiply and multiply and multiply. We are grateful beyond words that Courtney is with us and that she is at the Southeast Center. She has an office. As we started this morning, she told me, you know, it's pretty amazing. People discovered me this week. They've just been knocking my door down. It's been quiet for weeks and now everybody's here. April and Courtney do amazing work, but they're a team of two. And so as we talk about resources currently available, sometimes that means when I find a resource, I send an email to April and Courtney and say, hey, you probably know this exists already, but I found this resource and I wanted to share it with you. If they already knew, they say, huh, delete. If they don't, we expand, right? The resources that are there. It also means that they are working continuously providing additional resources and additional resources and additional resources for our students. These lists are on our website. They're at the very bottom of the Word document. These are additional resources by county. Courtney worked this summer updating these and helping to make sure that they are, yes, they're still there. Yes, these are still available. We share all of these. And I want to point out that if you're at Dixon, you don't just have to share the Dixon ones because we don't know where our students are coming from. And so by giving them here are all the different resources, we're able to pour out more and to be able to say, Neely Ann, talk to us. Thank you for your hand. Um, so this may already happen. It may be unrealistic. So I'm going to, I'm pleading ignorance right now. Um, but 
this updated list, I think for me, if I'm being honest about a faculty member, as a faculty member, sometimes I'm nervous about sharing what's available because the last thing I want to happen is to say it's available. And then like Maria said, they go to get it and it's not there. Uh, Cause then it's like telling a kid they're getting something for Christmas and then they don't get it. Uh, so, and again, I understand there's only two, so I'm not, my suggestion is not even saying that you too should be doing it, but somewhere it, if it could get to administration that is important of that should be available. I mean, there should be on our website under student life right there in real time, being able to click what's available, right? It should be. And again, I'm, I know that there's not, it's not staffed enough, but we could figure out a way to get the resources and someone to be able to do that. And again, not just pilot on the two people that are already too busy, but think about as a student, how amazing, if I could say to my students, you all, you know, when I'm doing my D2L spill at the beginning of the semester, and if you go here and you click here at any time during the semester, you can click this link and there's going to be an updated list of resources and what's still available. I, I just feel like we, I know as a faculty member, I would be way more comfortable. Uh, advertising, I guess, is the right word, right? I want to advertise something that I know is there and they can get. So for whatever that's worth. Uh, Courtney, did you unmute? Because if so, I want you to go first. Go ahead. Yes. So I wanted to share, this is posted on the website on the um student support resources page. It's at the bottom and they're listed out by county. The goal is to try to go through every semester and update it. But I went through this summer in like June and July and I reached out to the places. So I know that they're still taking students. And then if there's anything that like comes up during the semester, the goal is to try to update it as quickly as possible. Um, one thing that just popped up that I'll put out on everyone's radar is the um, diapers to diplomas program. If anybody needs any diapers, um, they're currently accepting people until September 3rd. And I have the link to that website if anybody wants that. But yeah, some things come through, um, but these are updated. And Maria, since you are in Dixon Humphreys, if there's anything that you know of that's not on this list that you want to add, please let me know because it was a little bit difficult to find some of the resources there because um, some of the links on the websites and things were outdated. So please definitely let me know. Um, but yes, this is on our student support resources page. We also have a um, general resource link that was newly updated. So that's like if a student wanted to apply for SNAP or WIC, um, Families First, Medicaid, things like that, that are national and statewide programs. Um, but yes, trying to update it. Um, <laughs> We're doing our best, but like you said, um, this is like a newer project. So um, as the semester goes on, I'm going to try to stay on that. Well, and thank you. I mean, you are just such a gift to our students, obviously. <laughs> I mean, that, it's a lot to keep up with and hopefully you'll yeah. get continued support and help. Thank you. Gracie, talk to us. Um, I was just going to talk about what Neely Ann said because I understand that um, that frustration, and I used to hesitate too, but um, I mean, and Neely, and I'm just talking about my experiences with my students, because I know you're at a different campus and the student mindset might be different, but my students, like even if I send them somewhere and because a lot of times the textbook assistants or, you know, stuff, are it, it's no longer available. The students don't react negatively at all they don't get upset. It's more what my students end up saying is, oh, well, that's a bummer. But now I know about it for next semester. Right. So so they just I mean, don't I don't know, because I don't want to tell you what to do. But like you have such a kind heart, but and you're afraid to hurt people, which is awesome. But maybe you're not doing as much hurt as you think. Like like seriously, um, maybe it might be that. Um, Yes, it's disappointing, but they're just happy that now it's on their radar 
So I just wanted to reassure you, like, I don't think you're damaging anybody. I think you're doing good. So um, I wanted to add in the moment, I, I didn't reiterate uh, that we contacted the right people. So we hope to have the campus open at 730 with a security officer present and everything good to go <laughs> next week. I mean, and because he was willing, he's like, oh, I need to be here earlier. I can be here at 730. That's not a big deal. We see nobody communicated that. Um, and I think that's a result of because we also don't have a director, you know, so it's like a, a domino effect. If you don't have the things in place to get our campus ready for the students to be open, um, it kind of has a domino effect, like you say. And like that student that the calculator was, I could tell she was disappointed. But in this case, it was something not that she communicated to me that she couldn't afford the calculator, but I could see that that was something she really needed. And I could just, and I immediately thought, hey, let me check if Dixon has him because Dixon has a supply of them somehow. They have it and they still had enough and we could be able to take care of that. But it's simple things like uh, some students have issues like I order something to the bookstore, it's on back order. I don't know when it's coming in, but I can't get a hold of the bookstore. I can't access them on online and I can't cancel the order. How do I fix this? And they just need a telephone number. But, you know, like they don't know, how. you know, it's things like that, that I don't know that we have the resources out there. They Maybe they could find it, but they find roadblocks as they're trying to get something done. And, and it's just like, oh, here's another number you could contact. It was hilarious yesterday because I asked Dondi, I went to the front office with the student. I said, okay, she needs this cancel. And she goes, oh, call the bookstore. Here's three numbers. I'm going, boy, you she did it from memory. I can't even remember the bookstore. And I said, you call them. She goes, often. I call them often. <laughs> so anyway, you know what I'm saying? It's just being... I guess going to the right person helps too for the resources because I can, I feel very confident that if I go to Diana or Dondi on our campus, I can find out where things are at, who, who to go to and who to approach when I don't know and how to touch somebody. So um, to make it happen. So I guess it's being quick to respond to whatever need they have and at least address it and not let it go because even if the answer is okay, we can't help right now, but here's what you could do. It's better than not addressing anything at all. I think that's part of the thing, so. And every time we provide a resource, we're showing care. And we're, I'm gonna say cracking the door open a little bit more each time, right? Because once you show care, once you show empathy, once you show concern, I'm more likely to come back and be a little bit more open and a little bit more open. And so as simple as, this is not an easy fix, but sometimes it's as simple as, hey, as I'm doing a weekly news item in my course or bi-weekly news item in my course, I'm gonna include a resource every time. Here's a Nashville State resource. Here's a Nashville State resource. Here's a Nashville State resource. And then it normalizes. Do they need it that day? Maybe not. Do they have access to it? Yes, they do, right? And then if you want, take the form, the Word document that I dropped in chat earlier. It's not perfect. Feel free, share that. Share it with your students. Put it in your content section. Our goal again today was not to say we can solve every problem, but we can crack open doors and build bridges to help students know that we're gonna help as much as we can. And we're gonna help provide the resources that we know are available to help. And so if you will, I'm gonna drop in chat. If you'll give us a little feedback about the section, about the resources, we're gonna post this recording on the Teaching Center's website. We're gonna put the resources there, PowerPoint there, and then share it. Because we know just as Maria said, sometimes it's knowing the people to be able to go to. And those people may not know the answer, but they know people that they can go to. And so our network builds and builds for oh, us. I can send this go. to like Southeast faculty. Like I could just send it out. It's fine by me. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Amy, do you mind sending me the email? I'm having trouble with the Zoom download thing. I don't know what my computer's special today. I don't know. Just not doing stuff. I don't know. That's but at okay. least Mine died on Monday. It can class, be special right? all day as long as yeah. they don't die. <laughs> yes. And now my cat's saying hi. Thank you, everybody, so much for being here. I do want to give a plug that at 10 a.m., 
the amazing Leah Welker is going to be talking to us about the mind as a muscle. After that, at 11 a.m., Kelsey Johansson is going to be talking about student life and how we can all get engaged in student life activities or sponsoring organizations or just sharing about it. You're not committing by showing up, but I wanted to let you know those are both available. And then the Surge Tech program is doing a meet and greet also today. So busy Friday. Congrats on surviving the first week. We've almost made it through the weekend. And thank you for the amazing work that you do for our students. And Courtney, to you in April. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. It is amazing work. Yes.